Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ashfika Rahman. I'm a visual artist from Bangladesh. And uh, this is my great pride and honor to stand here and address the amazing audience from all over the world to Horace's Global Meeting 2021. We have gathered a dynamic and visionary plan, uh, panel today. Each and everyone has their own expertise on the topic. I'm deeply honored to introduce our panel today. We have wonderful Dr. Phyllis, who is a multidisciplinary artist. Once Phyllis was invited to meet Honorable Dalai Lama, who asked her to contribute art and meditation to serve the greater good. She has organized and curated the Bloomingstone uh, Kathmandu International Art Exhibition. We have here with uh, Dr. Suzanne Victor. She is from Singapore. She is a legendary artist from uh, Singapore contemporary arts scene. She remained the first and only woman artist to have represented at the Singapore Pavilion for Venice Biennale. Victor was the co-founder and artistic director of significant Singaporean artist run initiative and spaces. We have wonderful Pierrot from Thailand. Pierrot is a multidisciplinary artist. Her work with uh, media include videos, photography, text, sound, mixed media and installation. Her work, her work usually reflects her experience, including questioning contemporary topic, uh, include gender, cultural change, globalization, and so on. We have visionary Kim today. She is a teacher and visual artist whose work explores the relationship between reality and dreams. She is a wonderful contemporary Chinese artist. She has been recognized as emerging female Chinese artist by the New York Times. She is one of the few women to hold solo shows in Chinese commercial art galleries. So coming back to our topic, we are exploring the fourth wave of feminism. And definition of feminism is more inclusive and wider. One time, the famous... Uh, um, Activist and writer Bell Hooks expressed a new definition of feminism. She said, one that does not simply fight for the equality of women and men of the same address, but of a movement that fight to end exist oppression, exploitation, without neglecting the other forms of oppression, such as racism, classism, uh, imp imperialism, and others. Each of those forms of expression is interconnected to each other. Coming back to our topic, now the question is why, where we stand in art. This is time to discuss the historical, political and social position of feminist art and artists. For centuries, gender influenced the production and reception of art. We saw our mother writing their lullaby and singing lullaby for, we saw that in our childhood and they were never recognized as an artist. That writing of that song was never appreciated in mainstream art. Even on that note, we can see that all the household artwork that done by our mother and grandmother was never recognized in mainstream art. Even today, it's hardly recognized. So the question is like, we saw that the female artists have been prevented from gathering and equal education and developing an artistic language. Even but we saw that there is so many movement that coming up. We saw that in early 90s, 60s, that feminist art movement came up and that actually influenced our today's art movement. And I would like to invite Dr. Phyllis to continue and grab the topic from here and give us a little insight about the historical and how feminist art has been represented historically, even today. Thank you very much uh for that wonderful introduction and thank you everyone for being here i'm very happy to be uh in the company of uh wonderful artists that i just met and i'm enjoying getting to know everyone and their artworks so i am going to speak about mainly from uh the 
a Western perspective, since I have so many other people who are going to speak uh, to the other parts of the world. Um, just a quick um, uh, information about myself that I was born on the Turkish Georgian borders and then study in Istanbul, Italy, and then US, and I've based in US for a couple of decades now. Um, now, um, Women are women are in art everywhere, uh, so it's not like we don't exist in art. But the problem is we exist as um, models and muses and inspirational objects sometimes. Uh, what we want to do, we want to be artists. We want to tell our own stories from our own point of view, and on, on our terms. That seems like a very radical idea for whatever reason. Um, and it's not only women that have this issue, right, about um, wanting to tell our own stories. Many marginalized uh, people from different races uh, have this issue. But women have been the second gender, second class world in many, many years. Now, some people think that, well, you know, women mm, didn't make art, so uh, therefore they are not in history. That's not quite true. Uh, women against all odds have been making art um, and succeeding uh, for centuries, uh, yet somehow their reputation, their uh, name gets eroded into obscurity in time. Their stories are not written. That success that they achieve in their lifetime doesn't translate into uh, history books and, and it's not... Um, translated or transmitted to other generations that come after them. So, um, when a uh, feminist documentary filmmaker uh, uh, wore art and revolution, she was filming Lynn Hershey's, uh, asked everyday New Yorkers uh, if they could name three female artists. And I want everyone to think about this. Can you name three female artists, like one, two, three, just like that? Now, those of us who are in the art world and taking art history, we, we could, but uh, most people couldn't name. Uh, they could name Frida Kahlo. They named Frida, <laughs> they knew Frida Kahlo. Uh, they could name, some of them, Georgie O'Keeffe. But beyond that, they had a hard time naming any other female artist. Um, um, it's not that also only uh, the arts began during Frida Kahlo's time, right, in the 1930s. And we can show her artwork, um, the first image. And um, and uh, and she was contemporary with the Georgia O'Keeffe. It's not that, you know, they were the only ones making art all of a sudden. Uh, it's just that they are close enough to us. Now, if we go back to the Renaissance, right? And we can see that a lot of women were not only making art, like they were making selfie, as I like to call. We have Artemisia Gentileschi, for example, at age 17, um, she was able to uh, make uh, self-portraits. And uh, similarly, you have, um, uh, let me. Judith Lester, Safranisa Anglosa, uh, they were able to not only succeed in making art, but they were able to get patronship from Medici's, from the Spanish court, right? So they really rose to the top of the top in their games. Um, now, most of us don't remember these um, names. We don't even know about them. But lately, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, we are beginning to hear about them. And there's a movie about the Artemisia Gentileschi, uh, for example. And, um, and mostly because she was raped by her teacher and then she took her to court. And that it gave her uh, a, some kind of reputation. So it's the drama that a lot of people are interested. But at age 17, she was able to stand up for herself, for her truth, 
take him to court. It, she was having her Me Too movement moment in 1500s on her own as a teenager. And Tassie, uh, her rapist, said, well, she was an easy lay. It's, it's not like she was a virgin. To uh, counter him, she was committed to her truth. She went through the dumb screws that they would put through people to see if they were uh, telling the truth. Now, imagine you're an artist, you need those hands, those fingers, but she was so determined to stand up for herself that she went through that. And she not only survived, she uh, achieved success. Uh, even Michelangelo um, and Leonardo uh, talks about her and then they were very impressed with her work. So then she began making uh, artwork that um, tackled the religious theme like every, every other male artist are doing, but like with the Susanna and the elders, which I saw, uh, a few minutes ago, instead of making like this two old men uh, looking at a woman and then she's receiving it, you know, nicely, like the, all the other male artists had, she put the fear and the horribleness of the sexual violence, the female body, you can see like, she's like, no. <laughs> so she was first to do that. Um, so she was very radical for her time, right? Uh, so, but most people, you know, again, don't know that unless we study. So it's not that women didn't make art, it's just that it's not written down, right? So I wanna go back to the cave painting art, uh, for a second. I want this second image. Um, women been making art since the cave times, and even, even before that, probably. So recent studies show that actually some of these handprints were most likely belong to women artists, but even, even then we don't look at the cave art and think that, oh, women made those art, right? So we are there, we are making art. It's just that we also want to uh, hold on to our history on our, our on our own terms, right? So now, um, not only in Renaissance women succeed in making art uh, in 18th century, 19th century, they were very instrumental. In Impressionist movement, they were instrumental. In uh, French uh, society, they were very influential. But uh, only four women artists, including Marie Antoinette's court artist, uh, who was a female, um, only four women artists were accepted to the academy until the French Revolution did away with that salon. Now in the Royal uh, Academy in London uh, was um, created by uh, two very influential women artists. I'm going to uh, look at their names so I don't uh, mispronounce. Okay, so Angelica Kaufman and Mary Moser, uh, but uh, if you can go to that image, they were not uh, allowed to enter the academia, even though they had found it. So there is a painting of all the artists who are part of the London uh, School of uh, Arts, but only you can see their pictures on the wall because they couldn't get in because of their gender. So, and this theme kind of continues. Uh, for a while, and I'm gonna skip to the um, second wave feminism and the feminist art movement in the 60s. So parallel with the second wave feminism, women artists also said, well, we want to really express our own emotions. We wanna tell our own stories. And the prevalent um, art movement at the time was minimalism and abstract art. Now that really didn't correspond to the female experience at the time, nor it corresponded to the world events or the American life. You had civil rights movements going on, you had Vietnam war going on, and yet the minimalist and the abstract uh, artists were saying like, oh, we are beyond emotions. We don't want content. So um, that, that created this battleground and this conflict and fight between the feminist artists and minimalist artists. But feminist artists were able to have their have their say and and be visible. One of the most successful uh, work was done by Judith Chicago with Dinner Party. Uh, 
she at first tried to fit in with the male artists and she was part of the Finnish fetish school in the West Coast. She was, you know, making squirrels, uh, squares and triangles and polishing uh, items. Then she decided that this is not me fully. So I am going to look at woman artists for inspiration. That ended up in a monumental uh, triangle table where she invited women from history to dinner. And it was so successful, thousands of people came and the 350 women from US in, and all around the world came to help her make it. But it could not find housing because uh, the Republican senators uh, said no. This was debated for an hour and a half in the U.S. Senate. They said no taxpayer money is going to uh, fund a museum to house this. They said this is just pornography. This is not art. That was their verdict. So um, what did they do, uh, Judy Chicago and others like her? They created the Feminist Art Project to promote uh, women artists, to connect, to share resources and experiences. And I studied with her in the early 2000s and decided to become part of the Feminist Art Project. And from that movement and from Judy and others, I learned that I'm not gonna wait for a museum to accept me. I'm gonna make then my own art exhibit. So I created the um, Women Expose Art Exhibit it began locally and then went uh, international. And, and it was also a fundraiser for the domestic violence shelter. So we once a year got together with other women artists to showcase our talents, our artwork, so instead of waiting for uh, other museums or galleries to you know validate us. We we're like, well, we're gonna do our, our own thing. But we were also very conscious that we had to do everything perfect. Or we had to do a really good job because we are judged more. They are. They look for problems and shortcomings to disqualify. Now, this is also true for the musicians. If they, uh, musicians and women artists, if they submit work uh, with initials or, or names that doesn't show gender, they get accepted more. So I, I thought to myself, why not have one day a year where all the women artists get together. So that's what we did. And it went on for 12 years until I went overseas. And then other people from uh, other countries that I invited for the show created their own women artists art shows in Argentina and Libya and in Italy. So that was a, that was a really good um, positive outcome that I take the theory and then manifest, put into action and manifest something. So, um, in my own artwork, then I began to tackle religion and woman, the tension between religion and woman, because I began to think, why? Why is it that even when women do good art, they do succeed? Why do they get you know, left behind? So I looked for the roots of this sexism and misogyny and and a lot of the time uh, for the West and the Middle East is the Judeo Christianity and Islam. And it could be, you know, other religions and philosophies for other uh, cultures. But it even goes beyond that. It goes back to the Greeks and beyond. It goes back to where, when goddess became God, when God changed sex from male to female, right? So it wasn't always that way. But uh, a few thousand years ago, it became that way, which also means that we can we can change it. Yes, the change is slow, but it, it's not impossible, right? So, if we can show my Eve, Eve pictures, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so. Um, so I first looked into the. Uh, Women and Islam, and I did inscri inscribing tradition. That's one on the left. Um, this tension between women and Islam, uh, and women too need religion and spirituality. It's not that we all want to reject it, but how do you come to terms with a uh, religion or faith where it says you 
are less or you are second class or you can uh, be punished uh, or you can be killed, for example, for adultery. Men get punished too, but they don't get killed for it, right? Okay. So then I, do, I move on to the Christianity. So the next one is Eve trilogy. Uh, one is called baptism, other is wedding, where only women are congregating. There is three generation. And the next installment is going to be Lilith and Eve. Um, so I am looking at the root causes as I see it, um, as far as I could go. And I'm probably gonna go beyond that next tackle the Greeks because Greeks are with us, whether with their um, democracy, law, our architecture, but also their misogyny we adapted from them. Um, now, moving forward, I wanna uh, quickly mention the guerrilla girls who have been active since the 80s. Um, they, made number of posters, but one of them, if we can go to that poster with the Odalask. Um, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think uh, we just need to little um, and make the speech a little shorter. We're running out of time. Like, okay. We just need to, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's wonderful to listening to you. It's, it's really important. It is fine. Uh, so I will end by saying that um, uh, today, even though majority of uh, art students and the arts uh, faculty are female only five percent of the artists in the museums and galleries are women oh yes that was a wonderful starting of the discussion i cannot agree you more i mean the way you actually explain the historical uh, representation and uh, the way we have been recording feminist art and even today the continuation today and we cannot really deny the impact of past, even today's practice and even today's uh, psychological and all the other movement. So on that note, we cannot uh, really deny the trans generational trauma and some topic like this. I would like to uh, invite Dr. Uh, Suzanne if she would like to grab the topic from here and uh, give us a little insight about the topic. So, Thank you, Dr. Chichek, for the insights into you know how women have become um, have been so obscured in history and continuing to this day. And hopefully, this would add to uh, women artists getting more visibility. Thanks, Ash Ashvika, for chairing this panel, and my thanks to Dr. Richter for his invitation to speak on this panel of wonderful women artists from all over the world. So I will take. I've timed my presentation is exactly six to seven minutes and I will do it within that time so the other artists can um, take over the mic. The feminism of collective, collective action and agency to navigate a first world environment is very different from situations that are empty of the most basic of human rights, such as when one is being beaten, gang raped and tortured by six attackers alone in the back of a bus in a developing country, as was the harrowing case in India in 2012. This is not to diminish the advances of feminism as we know it, but to acknowledge how feminism is actually a dynamic practice of being, becoming and belonging, wherever you situate your subjectivity. The language of feminism is a developing lexicon even as we speak, as are the actions and strategies to eradicate the exploitation, the oppression and the cruelty that is perpetrated upon the bodies of women as well as their psychology, you know, everywhere. So how a woman can survive and live, or more relevantly, if she survives at all in the immediate short term, to attain well-being and safety in the long run is a highly context-specific feminist endeavour. No doubt there are, mo there are universals that modulate, you know, universals are modulated by evolutionary, economic, or, you know, all other kinds of imperatives. But the needs of a black woman in America or in Africa is more often than not very different from those of a black woman in, Amer in, in Africa. So is the case of an indigenous Aboriginal woman in Australia from that of Arabic, Chinese, or other descent or for that matter, a white woman. 
So whether one is facing Islamophobia or one is being burnt alive for perceived transgressions against the patriarch of a family, um, when one is, you know, when you are melting with acid thrown at you by the boyfriend in London, when, you know, being raped in our midst, or worse, the years of rape in, um, as part of the arsenal of war, such as the enslavement of, uh, the sexual enslavement of comfort women by the Japanese military in World War II. They are all a scourge on our humanity. So to this day, you can find women who are more than 90 years old, these comfort women, they're still bent over in shame and diminishment through no fault of their own. Their decades of unshakable trauma continue to be denied um, in the politics of national secrets, nationally contested secrets, and the rewriting of histories because politicians want to whitewash their history. When my friend learned of her grandmother's hidden history as a comfort woman in 2013, her self-concept in terms of her race, her religion, her nationality, her ancestry was shocked into pieces drowning in vicarious trauma because she learned that she's the second generation result of systemic rape that her grandmother suffered as a young girl. Mirroring the countless others that pervade the social, the psychosocial geography of Southeast Asian um, atrocities. So the true lives of, you know, the truth of comfort women that politicians seek to, to reproduce as lies from a distance, they may very well not be very far away at all because she could be your acquaintance, she could be your neighbor, she could be your colleague at work, she could be, you know, your relative, your friend, your family. She is closer than you think. She is not someone else's issue, she is our issue. So in, in this book, See What You Made Me Do, written by Australian journalist Jess Hill, she informs us that in every country, you know, in every country, the home is the most dangerous place for a woman. In Australia, with a population of 25 million people, one woman per week is killed as a result of someone, a man that she's been intimate with, so an intimate partner violence. And so it can be very fatal. And so, however divergent our lived experiences are, you know, um, as women, there is a shared experience that, that is underlying our performance of situated subjectivity, wherever you are. I believe one of the most urgent challenges that is facing women and feminism today, you know, is the invisible force of trauma and its transgenerational impact um, that extends far beyond the violation of women's bodies. You know, because it is also a wounding of the mind in perpetual survival mode. When you're in perpetual survival mode, it is all the signs of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And this ultimately influences the way women live, the way women work, the way women love, the way women think and create. So as Dr. Gabo Mate informs us, trauma is not what happens to you. It is what happens inside you as a result of what happened to you. So for women whose day-to-day -day lives, you know, are already very pre precarious at the most rudimentary level, you know, sometimes it is the most imperceptible project that creates the most radical change, positive change in women's lives. A tiny mobile phone placed into the hands of pregnant women in northeastern Bangladesh to receive unconditional cash transfers and nutritional information from Sydney University's clinical trial, which they call Sean Jibon Cash and Counseling Clinical Trial. Sean Jibon means um, healthy new life um, in Bangladesh. It can mean the difference between irreversible stunted growth in babies or healthy brains and bodies for generations to come, to create positive futures for an entire village. In the investigation into the trial's impact on women's empowerment, the researcher and author, Dr. Well, she's, she's in her PhD, so it's 
Dr. Uh, Elizabeth Kirkwood. She informs us that gaining new knowledge, additional income, digital and financial literacy via a bank account, using that mobile phone, brings women to a more level playing field because then they can actually start you know, to create that positive future. Because other than that, they are just so far behind. So because the nexus of in economic and informational power resides with a woman in this trial in Bangladesh to reduce poverty, the risk of intimate partner violence is surprisingly lowered. It shows a substantial decrease even over after three or four years. So at the same time, the results are that it enhances spousal, that means the way the husband and the wife communicates with each other, right. the household communication, and the freedom of movement for the woman, because women are not supposed to be seen in the public sphere in this context. So there is a because there is a common aim in that in that in that in that project where the husband and wife understand that they have a common, compelling, positive future to work towards. So they work collaboratively and cooperatively. So while this is not an arts project, I feel that this kind of this is the kind of benchmark that feminism and the arts should aim for because it stops the killing of women and to create transformation transformational change in women's lives at an a very intimate every day as well as intergenerational intergeneration level intergenerational level thank you thanks thank you so much thank you so much doctor Susanne. i wish i could have listened to you more it's just because we have a uh, time li limitation it should have been a three hour long talk mm. actually so such a wide wider topic to discuss with and it's so wonderful to actually listen to you about the recent uh, phenomena that we are and going through as a feminist artist as a female artist we cannot even deny our own experience we uh, so on that note coming back to our topic that is a question that how will we actually encounter the current uh, mainstream and how will we actually uh, encounter the challenge to uh, prevent the mainstream that have been going on so far so i would love to invite uh, requested uh, kim uh, if she can continue with her experience and what she actually saw in her time. Um, uh, thank you, Ashvika, and thank you, uh, everyone. Um, I would just like to start briefly with um, introducing what I do because it has a little bit of relation to what Dr. Chichak just mentioned about women, women being treated as uh, muses or inspirations mostly mm -hmm. through, the, uh, through the history of known art. Um, could you please open image number one? Uh, image number one is a uh, is an old painting of mine, and what I do with my paintings is I take traditional Asian painting. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to mention one thing that we are actually having. Unfortunately, we are having really limited time. Probably we cannot uh -huh. go through the uh, entire. Uh, yeah, I will skip through a lot of them. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking traditional Asian uh, art and referring to art history. Image number two, please. Um, what I'm doing here is reversing the roles of the male-female body and the gazer and the gazed relationship in art history. And um, I also am looking a lot into uh, comic books. It's an co Asian comic book form called manhwa or in Japanese manga. And especially I think girls' manhwa is... Uh, really talks about uh, the female gaze and it really caters to the female uh, taste and interest. Um, so what I'm trying to do is trying to create a new tradition that women, that people like me, women who grew up in the 20th century can relate to other than the lofty art history of learned men that Asian art has been uh, devoted to. So moving on, jumping off to... Uh, image number, yeah, I can just go through, flip through those images. Um, yeah. I don't paint bodies of women. There are no represent bodily representations of women here because women is like the omniscient God uh, reigning the world within the frame from, from the outside. So she never appears. This is someone else, else's work. Um, so jumping to the next image, I would like to talk about what has happened in Korea. 
and how it has inspired me to be more engaged in the feminist uh, movement as an artist. In 2016, there was a brutal, brutal murder of a young woman in the heart of uh, the capital city, Gangnam. What happened is that the murderer was a guy, and clearly he said mm -hmm. in his own words that he was mad at women for always rejecting his advances. So what he did was he uh, hid himself in a bathroom with a knife in his hands, and he let six men go in a public bathroom, and when a young girl entered, stabbed her to death. Um, so this was clearly a femicide. And as you can see, there are hundreds of messages and flowers from uh, women uh, who are trying to um, cons consolate her. And many of the writings say she died because she was a woman. And this incident came across as a huge shock to Korean women because we were forced to face the fact that misogyny is so deeply rooted in our society, thanks to Confucianism, that a man actually believes that a woman should be always nice and compliant all the time, or else he has the right to punish her. But the victim was totally unrelated to the murderer. Uh, they were total strange strangers. Just die because she's a woman. And many of these messages read, it could have been me. And of course, it led to the spread of the Me Too movement, which was happening globally at the time. And also in time with the uh, Women's March, uh, which happened in the US, um, brought together by women who was uh, complaining against uh, the newly elected President Trump. Um, so all these rallies and open protests inspired uh, women artists to openly speak up against discrimination in the field of art as well. Um, so if you can show image number 12, um, I'm afraid that we're running out of time almost. Oh, really? So okay. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I, I wish I, we could just go through that, uh, all the slides that you shared. It's wonderful, but I'm okay. just afraid that we're running out of time. Okay. So, how many, how many minutes do I have? Uh, I'm afraid that we have only one minute for you. Okay. All right. So, um, the, uh, of the sexual harassment in the arts, because visual artists work individually rather than in a group. Um, the sexual advances or unwanted advances happen right. very on a, on a very personal level. So it's hard right. for us to tell if he's just being playful or if he's actually hitting on you. And right. um, I, I just wanted to say that uh, older art, women artists have to speak up against these inappropriate behavior by men just to protect younger women and younger artists who do not have our experience and who do not have uh, our resources so that they would feel safe if they think that there's something funny going on, they can speak to anyone. We need to have that kind of um, network together and that's been uh, happening on Twitter and mm -hmm. also on Facebook. Right. So, yeah, more later, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all the uh, recent incident that we have been encountering and, and the way we are actually uh, reacting on that and the way all the new uh, wave coming up uh, with the uh, impression of that uh, event. Uh, following that note, I would love to uh, focus on some other perspective uh, when we can see that uh, the how fem female artists and women artists have been participating in the intellectual art practice and uh, practice from a different perspective and actually presenting uh, in arts in with their own uh, intellectuality and actually uh, asking their own position in there. So that following that note, I would love to invite Pira if she can shortly <laughs> just uh, share with her experience. I'm so sorry that we really have less time. I wish uh, okay. we have three minutes to go. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you everyone for sharing your knowledge and experience. And I will go quickly about uh, my my personal experience. Um, I'm a female artist uh, living in Thailand, but uh, I never define myself as feminist, even though I have had so, so many bad experiences that it causes by patriarchy. Um, 
is probably because um, I used to work at, on an art project with LGBT people in 2012. And I found that not only women who were oppressed by um, the system, hierarchy and the patriarchy, uh, but there are many uh, people like LGBT people who have encountered similar experience. So uh, my opinions might be different from mainstream um, feminism or universal feminism uh, history. I think uh, if we want uh, to fight for gender equality, we, we need to fight for uh, equality of human being. And uh, we have to believe uh, that each gender must be equal by default, no matter what gender we are. And, okay. Uh, so the picture that Ash figure showing us uh, is the image of one fresh mob that it um, organized in Bangkok last year. Uh, this fresh mob organized and cooperated by feminists and LGBT uh, activists. They, they work together. And that event has supported the Thai pro democracy demonstration demand and uh, as well as uh, to call for equality for all marginalized groups. And regarding its result, it, it is quite successful in Thailand because the event could send their message to society, including uh, became the viral in, in Thai social media in Thai social media. So uh, I think the movement for feminism in the 21st century, uh, we should go beyond the boundary of feminism. In my view, I'm we should. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, uh, we yes. have uh, only four minutes to go, if we can just uh, summarize it. Uh, uh, OK. I'm so sorry. So, uh, so I think. In my view, um, we should gather all the oppressors together without depri depriving anyone. Uh, this is probably more powerful and effective than solely feminist uh, fighting. Okay, that's all what Absolutely. I would like to Thank show. you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pierat. I think, um, I mean, uh, following your uh, topic, we can follow, uh, look after the recent contribution of women uh, artists in the market, uh, mm -hmm. how Petron actually uh, reacting on feminist artists or female artists. I, I think I would like to um, I mean, invite our most uh, young and promising artists to really lead to discuss a little bit about the market, how market react on our art, uh, art produced by feminist artists. I'm uh, afraid we have very less time. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to share some of my experience. Um, when I just started my career, in that was mostly in Korea and Hong Kong. And people bought my works because they thought I'm an old man. Maybe as you can see, uh, according to those images, it not really looks, looks like feminist art. Uh, but I thought because there are three keywords in my art. The first one is light and the space and the formalist. Uh, so there are no gender and no race in those things. And now, as you can see, who picks the girls? That's from my other my uh, video works, who, which is commissioned by Dior, the luxury brand, because those luxury brands, they always on worship like beauty as a power. But to me, I think that that tells the story about the goddess in Nepal. Um, and they call it Kumari because those girls they are picked when they were just three or four years old. And then the lady, then they have to uh, stay, sit still like a statue for maybe 10 years. And uh, the last picture, I don't know if you guys can see it, that's a character, Huan yeah. marriage in Chinese. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm afraid that we are uh, end of the time. 
Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Lee, for sharing this, and thank you so much, the wonderful panel. I just wish that it could be the three-hour-long conversation because it's such a wider topic, and we could have continued this topic for long. And then, when I see uh, the a new wave and new perspective, new sensation, uh, and new sensitivity, new stories coming up from all the female artists that you have been sharing. I can see that uh, that is uh, uh, that is a rule, and that is that is showing the future actually. So we can always be optimistic. I just hope that uh, we will uh, see the hope in future. We'll see, and uh, we will draw the roadmap in the future. Thank you so much for being wonderful panel and optimistic i just wish we could have more time thank you so much being here wonderful have a good day thank you ashvika thank you hi everyone thank you thank you, thank you for everyone. all your contribution it's wonderful thank, thank you. you it was wonderful hi. to listen to you all